Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at examples of using the portfolio method. Let's get to it. All right, so here's our first example. We have that Brad invests $500 on January 1st of 2021 into an investment fund that uses the portfolio method. Given that the table of annual rates below is used, that would be this table right here, calculate Brad's account accumulation on January 1st of 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025. All right, so we're going to be doing a few different calculations in this problem. We wanna find the balance of Brad's account or the accumulation of his investment of $500 at the beginning of four different years. So to kind of keep everything straight, let's draw a timeline for this scenario. There are five different years that we need to make a note of. The first year on our timeline will be the year that Brad makes the investment, which would be 2021. At the beginning of 2021, he makes that investment of $500. So right here will be 2021, where he makes the investment. And then we want to know how much is in his account at the beginning of the following four years, 2022, 2023, 2024, and 2025. So we want to make a note of all of those years on this timeline as well. So this last year will be 2025. And then we have three years in between. So we'll have 2022 right there, 2023 right here, and 2024 right there. All right, so I'll label them. And so we want to calculate the accumulation of Brad's $500 at the beginning of each of these years. So we need to calculate four different amounts. We want to know the value in 2022 the value in 2023, the value in 2024, and the value in 2025. So if we want to start by calculating the accumulation at the beginning of 2022, we need to accumulate interest for this $500 for the whole year of 2021, from the beginning of 2021 to the beginning of 2022. So if you look at our table of portfolio rates, we are given a lot of different portfolio rates for the years from 2020 to 2026. Now we're not gonna to need to use all of these different portfolio rates, just the ones that apply to this scenario. Since Brad invested his $500 on January 1st of 2021, his investment will generate interest throughout the year of 2021. So if we go to our table here in 2021, the portfolio rate is 1.7%. And do note that just like the problem says here, this table only includes annual rates. So each of these rates apply for the entire year that they correspond to, all right? And they're also all effective rates, which means that we're working with compound interest here. All right, so to accumulate this $500 to the beginning of 2022, we need to use the interest rate for 2021. This rate right here of 1.7%. So let's calculate that. In 2022, we will have that $500 times an accumulation factor for one year using the portfolio rate in 2021. So that's 1.7%. So we will have one plus that rate of 1.7%, which will be 0.017. However, one plus 0.017 will just be 1.017. So I'm just going to erase this and add them together immediately. We'll have 1.017. All right. So if we multiply 500 by 1.017, we will accumulate that $500 for one year from 2021 to 2022. So 500 times 1.017 will be equal to $508.50. All right, so that is the accumulated value of that $500 at the beginning of 2022. Okay, so that takes care of the first year. We have now finished 2022. Now, what we want to do is calculate the accumulated value at the beginning of 2023, that next year. And it's important to realize here that the portfolio rate is going to change. So to calculate the accumulated amount in 2023, it's not going to be as simple as writing 500 times 1.017 squared. We're not accumulating that $500 for two years using the same portfolio rate. The portfolio rates change per year. In 2022, which would be the year that we are accumulating the interest for now, the portfolio rate is now 3.9%. So we can't calculate it like this. That would be incorrect. So let's back it up a little bit. We're still going to be multiplying by 1.017 for one year. That accumulates the 500 from 2021 to 2022. But now we need to multiply by another accumulation factor for one year using the interest rate for 2022. That will bring us forward to 2023, all right? And so we will use the portfolio rate that corresponds to 2022. 
So we will multiply by the accumulation factor of one plus the portfolio rate of 3.9%, which in decimal form would be 0.039. All right, I'm just going to immediately add it to one every time just to save a little space in our work here. All right, so $500 times 1.017 times 1.039 will give us the accumulated value at the beginning of 2023. And note that this calculation would be the same as multiplying 508.50 by this one accumulation factor here. But if we plug this into our calculator, it would be equal to $528 and 33 cents. That is the accumulated value in 2023, or I guess I should say at the beginning of 2023. Okay, so that takes care of the second year. Now we need to worry about 2024, and to calculate the accumulated value in 2024, we just need to multiply by another accumulation factor that uses the portfolio rate for the next year. It changes once again. So now to accumulate our value, we are going to use this portfolio rate right here, 2.5%, that corresponds to 2023 because we're taking our investment from the beginning of 2023 to the beginning of 2024. All right, so we're going to use that rate of 2.5%. And so for 2024, we'll have that $500 times the accumulation factor for 2021, which is 1.017 times the accumulation factor for 2022, which is 1.039. And now we'll multiply by another accumulation factor for 2023, which will be one plus the interest rate of 2.5%, which will give us 1.025. And so if we multiply these values together, which would be the same as multiplying this number by this accumulation factor, you would find that the accumulated value at the beginning of 2024 would be $541.54. That is the accumulated value on January 1st of 2024. Okay, so now we just have one year left we just need to know the accumulation at the beginning of 2025. So it's the same calculation that we've been doing. We just need to multiply by another accumulation factor that will use the portfolio rate for 2024 to take our investment from 2024 to 2025. All right, and so that portfolio rate, if we go to our table, is 4.2%. 4.2% is the portfolio rate for 2024. So the accumulated value at the beginning of 2025 will be equal to 500 times 1.017 times 1.039 times 1.025 times one more accumulation factor using that portfolio rate of 4.2%. So we'll have one plus 4.2%, which is 1.042, which now if we multiply everything together, which would be the same, by the way, as multiplying this value by 1.042, we will find that the accumulated value at the beginning of 2025 is $564.28. That is the accumulated value on January 1st of 2025. Okay, and so with that, we have now completed this example. We found the accumulated value at the beginning of each of these years for Brad's account, given that he makes that initial investment of $500 in 2021. Okay, let's take a look at one more example for this video. All right, so here's our last example. We have that Janice makes an investment of $3,000 on January 1st of 2012 into a fund that uses the portfolio method with the annual rates in the table below. And that would be this table right here. One year later, on January 1st of 2013, Janice's balance is $3,271.20. If her friend Rosie makes an investment of $2,000 on January 1st of 2010 into the same fund, what is Rosie's balance on January 1st of 2013? All right, so there's seemingly a lot of different things going on in this problem, but let's try to break it down by drawing out a timeline. All right, and so what we need to determine is what is the first year that is mentioned in this problem and what is the last year? Well, if you look at our problem here, Janice makes an investment in 2012, but her friend Rosie makes an investment in 2010. So as far as I can tell, 2010 is the earliest year that we are given in this problem. So that's gonna be my first date on this timeline. And now if we look for the latest year or the furthest year into the future for this problem, just based on this table of portfolio rates, it looks like it will be 2013. And we can see that that's true by looking at our problem here. We know the value of Janice's balance 
in 2013, and we want to find Rosie's balance in 2013. All right, so I don't see any years after that. So 2013 is our final year. Okay, so now let's just label all the years in between. We'll have 2011 and 2012. Okay, so now that we have drawn our timeline, let's start labeling some different things that are happening. First off, we know that Janice makes an investment of $3,000 on January 1st of 2012. So that will be right here. So Janice, I'm gonna use this color for Janice, she makes an investment of $3,000 in 2012. Now the next thing that we're told is that one year later, on January 1st of 2013, Janice's balance is $3,271.20. So that's her balance right here. So I'll write that in. We have $3,271.20. All right, now the next thing we know is that her friend Rosie makes an investment of $2,000 on January 1st, 2010. So that's our first year right here. So I'm gonna represent Rosie with this color. Her $2,000 is made right here in 2010. And just to make this a little bit more clear, Janice will be this row of numbers and Rosie will be this row of numbers. Okay, so nothing is going on for Janice in those first two years of this timeline, but she does make an investment of $3,000 here, and then we have the accumulated value one year later. Okay, so that's where the $2,000 is invested, but we wanna know what Rosie's balance is on January 1st of 2013. We wanna know the accumulated value of this $2,000 investment three years later. So we wanna know the value right here, okay? And so if you take a look at our table of portfolio rates here, you'll notice that one of them is missing, right? The portfolio rate for 2012, we don't know what that is. It's represented with X, but we do know the rest of our portfolio rates. But the fact that we don't know what the portfolio rate is for 2012 is an important part of this problem. Because if we want to know the accumulation of Rosie's $2,000 in the beginning of 2013, we need to know the portfolio rate for 2012. In order to accumulate this $2,000 all the way to 2013, we need to know the portfolio rate for 2010 to take the $2,000 to 2011. Then we need to know the portfolio rate for 2011 to take the investment to 2012. And then we need to know the portfolio rate for 2012 to take the investment to 2013. But since we don't know what that portfolio rate is for 2012, we currently can't calculate the accumulation of Rosie's account. And so this is where the information about Janice's account comes into play. We know what her initial investment was, as well as the balance of that investment one year later, from 2012 to 2013. The exact same period for which we need to know the portfolio rate for in order to calculate Rosie's accumulated value. All right, so we can use these two values that we know about Janice's account to actually solve for that portfolio rate, right? For Janice, to find that accumulated value in 2013, we would take her $3,000, multiply it by one plus the interest rate or the portfolio rate for 2012, which is represented with X, and that would give us that $3,271.20. So by setting up this equation, we can solve for X, which is the portfolio rate for 2012, and then use that to accumulate Rosie's investment of $2,000. All right, so let's solve for X here. I'll start by dividing both sides by 3,000. That will give us that one plus X is equal to 3,271.20 divided by 3,000, which is 1.0904. And then if we subtract one from both sides of the equation, that gives us that X is equal to 0 0.0904. All right, so that's the decimal form of the portfolio rate for 2012. But if you multiply this by 100, then you would see that the portfolio rate is 9.04%. So if you want to, we can write that in here. We now know that X is equal to 9.04%, and we can use that portfolio rate along with the portfolio rates for 2010 and 2011 to accumulate Rosie's $2,000 to the beginning of 2013. Okay, so let's do that. We now know that the portfolio rate for 2012 is 9.04%. We were able to find that by using what we knew about Janice's account. But now for Rosie, we can take her $2,000 and multiply it by three different accumulation factors. One that will use the portfolio rate for 2010, another one that will use the portfolio rate for 2011, 
and then one more that will use the portfolio rate for 2012 that we just found, all right? We need to accumulate this $2,000 three years into the future, so we're going to need one, two, three different accumulation factors or different portfolio rates. All right, so for 2010, it's 9.69%, so we'll have one plus that percent as a decimal, which will be 1.0969. Then we'll multiply by the accumulation factor using this portfolio rate for 2011, which is 8.97%, so we'll have 1.0897. And then finally, we'll have one more accumulation factor, but using that portfolio rate for 2012, of 9.04%, so we'll have one plus that percent, but as a decimal, so we'll have 1.0904, okay? And so, if you plug that into your calculator, if you multiply 2,000 by these three accumulation factors, that will give us the accumulated value of Rosie's account in 2013, which will be $2,606.69. That right there is the final answer to this problem, okay? And so with that, this was the last example for this video. But if you do want to see another example, I do have one more available on my membership site. And so if that's something that you are interested in seeing, I would encourage you to look into my membership site. You'll also get access to dark mode versions of most of my videos, which means that instead of this white background that you see in this video here, it'll be a black background and generally white writing and the colors will look a little bit different, but it is basically a dark mode version of all of my videos where the colors have been inverted. All right, so I'd encourage you to check that out. But with that, that's it for this video. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.